So far in this series, I've covered borrowing tokens from AppScript and the service account. The most common type of OAuth tool you'll want to use though is likely to be the web app where an interaction with the user is required to get authorization to access resources. There are two ways to publish a web app in AppScript. One is to publish it as me, that's the owner of the script. In this case, the web app would want to be accessing resources owned by me, no matter which user was actually running it. It could be that a service account would be a better choice in this case, but service accounts don't work with all APIs, so you have to go through this route. The other way is to publish the web app to run as the user accessing the app. In this scenario, the app will want to access resources owned by the user, and will need to ask for authorization to be able to do that. In this example, I'll show the first scenario, running the web app as the script owner, in other words, as me. So it will be accessing resources owned by me. We'll be using the Goa library to manage the token infrastructure as before, and in effect there is only a very small difference in implementation if the app is published to run as the owner of the script versus as the user running the script. So the first task in the newly created project is to add the Goa library like this. You'll get the library key again at the end. I'll be using the Cloud Vision API again, which amongst other things can be used to do image analysis. So I need to enable the Cloud Vision API in the developer console. This API needs billing enabled, so I'll use a project I already have billing enabled for. As usual, we can use the API Explorer to find out which scopes are needed. So we can see that we need the Cloud Platform scope. Next, I need to create some credentials. So we need an OAuth client ID, and we're doing a web application. Just give it some, some name. And these restrictions, what they are is to tell the Cloud Console where to expect authorization requests to come from. Now Go has got a, a shortcut that helps you to find out what these are, so we'll come back to that later on. So we'll create that. We don't need to bother about that ID because we're going to download the file instead. So we'll download the JSON and move it to Drive. So we'll remember that shareable link for later. This ID is all we need. So we need a one-off initialization function to put stuff in the property store for the project. So this is where Goa will maintain the token infrastructure it needs to communicate with Google's authentication servers. So the only changes you need to make here to this pattern is the file ID of the downloaded file, so this, this one that we just downloaded, the scope, which we found out from the API Explorer, and some name by which you'll know this package in the future. Now, because I'm going to publish this web app as me, I'm going to use the script properties store, and that'll mean these credentials will be the same for all users of the script. So now we can just run that, and it will have made an entry in the script properties for this package name with all this stuff in there. And that's all the setup that's required. You can just delete this one off setting if you want to now. And now we can create the web app. So web app starts with a do get function. So the first thing to do in the do get is to create a Goa object using the package name and the property service that we assigned in the one off function. Now this is the important part for, for web apps. The first time this is run, there's a consent dialog to go through. If Goa executes get consent, it will go off into that dialog to get consent and authorization and then automatically restart your app back at this point. So let's publish the app and see what that consent dialog looks like. And I'm going to be publishing this as me. And here's what the consent dialog looks like. So we'll copy this. If you remember, we had that restrictions area in the developer console that we needed to complete. So we'll go back there and in here we'll put that URL that Goa gave us and this is always the same thing. This is always script.google.com we can save that. So now back in the web app when we tell this to go because we've told the developer console to expect a request from this URL, the one that Goa told us, it will allow it to happen. So that takes us to the regular authorization dialog, and that's it. We haven't, of course, written our web app yet, so nothing's returned. So let's go do that now. 
So first let's create a function that we'll call from the web app to go and do the image analysis. This is much the same as we did in the service account example, taking some random image from my drive and asking the API to analyze it. So the first thing we do is we create a Go object and that allows us to be able to get the token from it. And of course at this time it should have a token because we will already have gone through the authorization process. And here's the request, I, I won't go into it again. And all it does is return the data from the request and something about the file so we can render that in the web app. So here we're using the, the token, which is what this whole story is about after all. And now we can create our client side HTML file. I've redone it over here. I won't go into the details of it since this is about Goa rather than being about writing web apps. But let's see what the result is now. So we'll run it again. And you'll notice that this time we don't go through the process of asking for authorization because we've already done it. And in fact, Goa will take care of refreshing those tokens until you cancel it. But here's the result. This is taken that image from my drive. It's gone off to the API and it's returned these results about it. For more information on how all this works and to get the code, visit the link shown here. I got plenty of app script material available, so if you've got any special app script video requests, then please let me know here in the comments.